It's season three of Sports Out of Pocket. But to be the man, you gotta beat the man. That's a W. How many people wanna eat a W tonight? We bring you the craziest controversies. We got Tyreek Hill, who's fine. That seven thousand dollars for not wearing socks. socks. <laughs> <laughs> that is the dumbest fine I've ever seen in my life, dude. Fire me up. And I have to go at this brave offense for not doing a thing in October for the second year in a row. And the return of twin picks. That's not even in discussion. I think what you should do is shut up and let the judges speak. Interviews you don't want to miss. This is the Philly Sports Guy, and you're listening to Sports Out of Pocket. This is former MLB All-Star Justin Masterson. Sports Out of Pocket is back and better than ever. Let's go! Welcome, everybody, to a brand new edition of Sports Out of Pocket. Now, I know what you're thinking. Steven Lambert looks a little little different. You just can't place your finger on it. A little it. slimmer? Let me help you out. Slim- <laughs> hey, hey, listen. I, let me help you out. I am not Steven Lambert. I am Chase Jefferson. I'm normally sitting in this seat right here, but today I am taking over duties as a host. Now, I have big shoes to fill. I don't think I'm going to do as good of a job as Steven, but I have big shoes to fill. But Steven's still here. He's taking over Jackson's spot at board off. And then so we did right. improve in one position. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. One of our spots got better, so if it sounds a little better, that's why. And on my right, I got Andrew, and I got Jackson. Hey, I'm so. normally sitting where you sit, buddy. How does that you make are. you feel? Do you feel like, are you well, threatened actually, by me? I'm, I'm standing up. Are you so threatened you're looking, by me? Yes, I don't, I, that's why I'm scooted more towards Chase's side and not yours. I'm trying to make sure there's a big gap here. Well, uh, well, how's y'all's week been? Man, it... <sighs> Honestly, man, this week has been bad when it comes to, like, my fantasy stuff going on. The, my <laughs> bracket in the Sweet 16 completely fell apart. Thank you, Jackson Schrader, for having a worse bracket than me because and I was the second worst one. Um, and uh, you saved me from getting a pie to the face. I appreciate that. Uh, hey. it's just, it's, it was rough all Jackson, around. Jackson, why are you talking? You had Kentucky in your Final Four, pal. <laughs> yeah, who is a top four or five team? Jackson doesn't matter. No, watch the Oakland. Matter? Not do even get, Oakland, California. The, the fake Oakland. Me. Actually, I'm talking about me. I get a pick at next year's draft. I want to congratulate Andrew because he nailed that NC State pick. He said from the beginning that NC State was going to the Final Four. So let me shake your hand. I actually congratulate you on that. And every other of my Final Four teams are officially eliminated, by the way. So, but, hey, at least I get to hold on to that. You know, hey, one but, for four ain't too shabby. There's so many bright things to look at this week. Baseball came back. Oh. You know, we can go home every single day and watch a great baseball game. Except for today. But <laughs> except for today, yeah. Well, thank, you know, thanks for the yeah, like terrible delays weather all over the place. in Chicago. But tomorrow feels a little different. Like it feels a little like something's like the atmosphere is different. Is that because the what Braves? Would are, that be? Is that because the Braves aren't playing tomorrow? It's not because the Atlanta Braves have a day off. Oh, it's is it because not? Woolstock 2024. Oh! Is here. Oh! Are you ready for the hottest concert that ever hit West Georgia I am. to you make its return? Because Wolf Radio has got you covered with Woolstock 2024. Let's go, baby. Sure the Wolf from within on Thursday, April 4th. That's tomorrow. If they don't from have six, food, games, and music, I'm not going. Well, you're in luck. Because from 6 what? to 9 p.m. What? in the campus center, we have live music, food, games, Yo! and more. Let's go yes. this out on UWGs. Y'all aren't ready for this. That's crazy. Own finest performers. Dark Souls Thug, no. Jay Pruitt, no. Jay Ball Sauce, no. Hero, no. Kalia, no. 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 But also, a little announcement. Are you interested in joining the UWG Marching Band <laughs> or UWG Color Guard? Then follow the Marching Bull students and UWG Color Guard on Instagram. Click the links in the bio if you're interested in joining. Yeah, shout out to the Marching Band. Shout out. Ooh, marching Wolves, I, I think that's what they're called. Joining. That is what they're called. Now let's hop into the show. I'm just here so I won't get fined. We in here talking about practice. It's time for the latest sports controversy. All right. Now, if you're wondering why we do this segment every week, it's because the beautiful thing in sports is that every single week there's something that's controversial. So to start this segment, Angie, why don't you lead us off? Yeah, so of course everybody knows that the most watched women's basketball game in the history of our existence yes. took place this past week. It was the Elite Eight game between Caitlin Clark's Iowa Hawkeyes and Angel Reese's LSU Tigers. We all know where it went down in the natty yesterday. We're going to be, ta- or last year, we're going to be 
be talking about this later in the show, so I'm going to stick yeah. away from the actual game itself. But what I'm going to touch on is what Angel Reese said in the post-game conference. Why, why would you be talking about that? I mean, it was a completely cordial game. Oh. Both of them were very nice to each other. It was. Like, they shook hands. I mean, it was just a very, like, you know... Everybody respected each other. I mean, there was no heckling from the crowd. No. Oh, no like all. waving goodbye when no. Angel Reese got fouled Angel, out. Angel Reese is a very nice and respectable player, so I don't see, like, there's no beef going on. You're right. So, so you what, know what? What do you want to touch Maybe on? I should read her exact quote from the post-game interview. Let's, I, let's I all love discuss. I'd love to hear it. So this is what she said. She said, I don't really get to stand up for myself. Um, I have great teammates. I have a great support system. I've got my hometown. I've got my family that stands up for me. I don't really get to speak on the things just because I tried to ignore them and I try to stand strong. I've been through so much. I've seen so much. I've been attacked so many times. Death threats. I've been sexualized. I've been threatened. There are so many things and I've stood strong every single time. I just try to stand strong for my teammates because I don't want them to see me down and not be there for them. Mm -hmm. I'm still a human. All of this has happened since I, not we, <laughs> since I won the national championship. I said the other day, I haven't been happy since then. Let me, here, I, listen, first of all, I just want to go and say this. Jealous. I, I'm just going to go and say this. <laughs> Obviously, I don't condone anybody receiving death threats, no, being no. sexualized. No, absolutely. Because, you know, sports, at the end of the day, they're just sports. And some people do take that too far, and I do recognize that. And it's, ve it's very sad that she does have to endure that outside right, of basketball. Right. With that being said. Her entire persona on court since she's, since, since she's committed to LSU basketball has been the villain mentality. She has been the antagonizer. She yeah. has been the, uh, the showboater. She has been the, hey, college basketball is about me. Me, not about Caitlin Clark, not about my team. My team. It's been about me. She has carried that resume all throughout her career. She has been the villain arc. And now, since she finally lost, since she finally mm -hmm. got outplayed by Caitlin Clark, yeah. now she wants to she play. She was outplayed by Caitlin Clark the last time they faced the March Madness Very tournament. true. Very true. But now that she has officially lost and been, you know, she's played her last game of LSU basketball, now she wants to adapt the victim mindset. And here's the thing. Like I said before, very sad situation outside basketball but um here's the thing though when you when you become a star basketball player and a very well-known player anywhere between athletes kids and all that you're gonna you're gonna have uh these negativities being sourced from right. everywhere draymond green experiences it um i mean just all kinds of athletes experience it that's why you've got to place yourself outside of social media because let's be honest she's not going to be walking to the supermarket and somebody's going to you know trash talk her you know in public all this is yeah. sourcing for social media so outside of that just log out social media and then all will be well but you can't have this villain mentality the show butter mentality and then have everybody try you try to get everybody to synth yeah. synthesize for you when you finally lose in a March Madness tournament. That's not how this works. Nobody feels sorry for the villain. I want to highlight what Jackson said, actually. This is the second time that Angel Reese got outplayed by Caitlin Clark, and she didn't do this the first time that she lost to Caitlin Clark. I think she's doing this because mm. she realizes she's no longer the face of women's basketball. Jackson, what you got to say? Oh, I was just saying. Do uh, the one, one minute. minute um, but <laughs> honestly, I'm kind of agreeing with you guys. Like, what you said, like, that whole phrase to me is just saying literally what you just said. It's not we. Mm -hmm. It's I won the yes. national championship. So she has this whole mentality of like, and bat, listen, a, like what was it, a year ago, two years ago? Yes. College women's basketball was centered around Angel Reese because yeah, she was the best player year. in the world. Yep. But guess what now? You ain't the face of women's basketball anymore. It's nope. Caitlin Clark. She is yeah. literally changing the way that people look at women's basketball. She is like literally, can you tell me a year ago, when, when's the last time anybody's ever had three million people watching a women's basketball game? It's, never happened. It's never happened. Never happened. Never happened. Never happened. Mm -hmm. never happened. She is getting eyes on this game. She is literally literally the face of the sport right now and Angel Reese just ain't having it you like know, it's she just can't handle that the Iowa and uh, LSU game uh, this past week had more viewers than last year's World Series and NBA Finals which I found that impressive it had my dad who's not even a big basketball fan to begin with watching the game oh I just wanted to say one more final thing before we move on okay. but UConn versus Iowa is this Friday April f yeah April 5th uh who wins that game Iowa. Uh, Kalen Clark. You on the cannot way. bet against Iowa right now. Kalen Clark's not playing on another level. 
U- UConn is the most, like, I think UConn's the hottest team in turn of this tournament because not talking about the players, Jackson. I wasn't Stop talking smirking. about that. Hey, we'll actually get into that more Dude, in a little bit. Get no, uh, they're no, still they're in still the final four. They're still in the final four. They, they might be the team we that, could they, see, that takes home the They're one of the I'm greatest women's basketball teams we've seen since UConn won, like, 112 games If in South Carolina beats NC State, we could see an Iowa and South Carolina national that championship. That would be cinema. That would be cinema. But we'll get more on that in a little bit in a couple segments. But now we got to hop into some cash or trash. It's sports out of pockets, cash or trash. I would like to start off this cash or trash. In recent news, today, Stephon Diggs was traded to the Houston Texans. We know that now. CJ Stroud has Tank Dell, Nico Collins, Dalton Schultz, Whew. Stephon Diggs. You also have guys Joe like Mixon. Joe Mixon in the backfield, Damian Pierce as well. You have an amazing defense no, in Will a, Anderson. Damian Pierce isn't out anymore. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Oh, I thought he, Singletary's gone. That's oh, yeah. right. That's who it was. I'm Jamie sorry, guys. Pierce no. is actually Will a very Anderson, underrated running back. Will Anderson and uh, Derek Stingley, guys like them on the defense. So my cash or trash is, are the Texans, obviously Texans are like a Super Bowl contender, but do they surpass the Chiefs when it comes to Super are Bowl contenders? Are you sure they're a Super Bowl contender? I would say so. I, oh, I yeah. Actually, 100%. Are they a Super they're, Bowl they're, contender? Like, they're, I think they're a top five team in – in the AFC, but also at the same time, there's still three teams, in my opinion, that are still better than them. And Who are the still, three teams? They still got Kansas City Chiefs, yeah. um, at Baltimore Ravens, yeah. and uh, you know what? Bengals at full healthy. I'm going to take the Bengals. That's that's fair. That's fair. No, that's fair. Even a full healthy Bengals team. Yeah. Now yeah. That, I don't now, like Ben uh, against Burrow. Now, now Burrow that at full health. The only because the Texans now have Joe Mixon, and they took I that mean, away from Cincinnati. Mm. That's the only reason I'm taking Houston over Cincinnati. But CJ yeah. Stroud not saying he's anywhere near oh, Patrick sorry. Mahomes. But he mirrors the Steelers. The Steelers. Ooh, yeah. better than the Texans, though? Dude, I don't know. All of the moves I, the Steelers made this year. I had to win the I'm gonna have then. to see them play because yeah. they they got a new if offensive the coordinator. Top five in the NFC. You gotta look at the Steelers in the AFC. Right. No, don't Absolutely. get me wrong though. Yeah. They have the material to be a top five team in the AFC. Don't get me wrong. I'm not dissing that at all. Now, Jackson, I'm actually gonna say cash for yours because uh, look at CJ Stroud. He mirrors Patrick Mahomes a little bit, especially when it comes to throwing the deep ball and how accurate it is. Now, I don't think. They're going to surpass the Chiefs because you still got to get past an experienced Patrick Mahomes. But I think they are more than capable to contend for that spot. So I'm going to give it a cash. I think Stephon Diggs is officially out for blood now. He couldn't get the job done against the Kansas City Chiefs in the postseason with the Bills. But he's got, who's no question going to be an MVP in this league, CJ Stroud throwing him the ball. So here's my other question on the other side of this. Where does this leave the Bills? Well, I'm actually <laughs> glad you said that because I was Cortland look- Sutton, number one receiver. I was looking at some numbers. Cortland Sutton doesn't play for the Bills. Oh, I thought you did. Curtis Samuel. Curtis, Curtis Samuel. Samuel. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm all over the place today, guys. Yeah, same initials. I'm glad y'all said same that initials. though. Thank I you, was, Jackson. I was doing some research, and the last four seasons where Diggs played with Josh Allen. Josh Allen consistently had over 4,000 yards, exactly. and Stephon Diggs consistently had over 1,000 of those yards. Yeah. During those seasons, Josh Allen averaged 32 touchdowns. Diggs had more than 10 of those touchdowns per year. Now, obviously, Diggs was a big contributor to Josh Allen's success mm-hmm. in his time with Buffalo. But then you also look at the season before Diggs even arrived, and Josh Allen was close to 3,000 yards with 20 touchdowns. So, I, I'm, I'm actually going to... Uh, this kind of segues into my catch of trash. Do y'all think Josh Allen's going to be the same without Stephon Diggs? Because uh, Curtis Samuel is wide receiver number one, and they have Kincaid, they have Knox, but is Stephon Diggs going to be proven Josh right? Allen's going to have a big challenge in front of him because he's been dealing with the same receiving core for what it feels like the last three years. You right. Okay, Dave, if I am you not have Gabe wrong. Davis, you have Stephon Diggs. Um, all, both of them are gone now. If right. I am so not now, wrong. now Curtis Samuel's yeah. your number one receiver. It's about him like adjusting making that relationship getting the getting the targets to him but also at the same time I think I don't know if the Bills are going to be the same Bills to where we, we see like 10 plus 11 ones with 11 no, ones with them. No, the Bills are not going to be the same. I'm looking at, hold on, can well, y'all continue While Jackson's looking at that, look I was just going to say my poll real quick. I'm going to actually quote the great Stephen A. Smith because I think he said it best. 
Every team that Stephon Diggs has played for, he has made the quarterback subjectively better. Look at Case Keenum. Case Keenum, yes. Even Teddy Bridgewater. We had to play for Teddy with Teddy Bridgewater right. for that short time. Teddy Bridgewater had the best four-game stretch of his NFL career. And then you saw Josh Allen. Yes, he was great before – not great, good, before Stephon yeah. Diggs got there. But once he did get there, Josh Allen was great, throwing for 3,000-plus yards per season, some 4,000 seasons. But the thing still the, – the still things lies – sorry, Lord, there's still the question there. Can um, a team or can Stephon Diggs or any team in the AC for that matter get past the Chiefs? Because that's something that the Bills with Stephon Diggs could not do for three seasons. All right, that is what I was looking at. So before Stephon Diggs got to Buffalo in 2020, Buffalo's wide receivers were Cole Beasley. They also had Dawson Knox and John Brown. I forgot about Cole Beasley. They are no longer on the team. And Josh Allen's best season was 20 touchdowns, 9 interceptions with a 10-6 record. Right. Every other season with Stephon Diggs there. Remember, the Bills also lost Gabe Davis as well. Yep. So the Bills, uh, Josh Allen had uh, 37 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. 36 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. 35 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. He took a step back this year, still a solid uh, touchdown to interception ratio with a 29-18. and 18. Well, so, And after all of that, remember, I can tell, I'd say this. No, also, if the Bills do not not play the Chiefs, the yeah. Bills make it further in the playoffs. It's been the Chiefs. Yeah. Oh, the Chiefs also, are the ones also, that knock also, them down yeah, in the playoffs. Look at the time. Bills' defense. Well, Half of the Bills' defense is gone, too. Yeah, they, they, lo- yeah, they, they lost their uh, safety duo. This upcoming season is what's going to separate a good quarterback from a great quarterback, because yeah. Patrick Mahomes receiving core Ooh. took a hit when Tyreek Hill left, Very and true. what did he do? He came yep. home with the ring. So what is Josh Allen going to do when their receiving core takes a and hit? And now, <laughs> dude, the Chiefs, if the Chiefs get Xavier Worthy in the, if Xavier oh. Worthy in the draft, well, that just oh, I can't believe they've that. already that got, they've already insane. got they've already got um uh, Marquise Brown Marquise Brown people yep. are already talking and about Rashi Rice is and I was gonna um, talk about Rashi Rice and controversy but uh, I don't think Rashi Rice is gonna get any punishment for that. Oh, why don't you touch on that? Like, explain well, more. Was, it a, was it a DUI? Was it a DUI? I can't now. Well, now let me go ahead. I want to switch over because we got two minutes left. All right. Um, let's switch over into baseball because okay. there is a team that is in Major League Baseball right now that just cannot get things together. They can't pull. They can't find a win. They can't find a win anywhere. They, the closest they ever got to actually getting a win was opening day, but then they fell to the Pirates. I'm talking about these Miami Marlins. Schrader. Sorry, Schrader. Schrader. Jackson Schrader. Sorry, Schrader. Ginger Jack. 0-7. Here's, sucks. What I, here's what I want to talk about the Marlins. They are on the worst start in franchise history. And you know the Marlins. Yeah. The Marlins have had some stinkers of a year, but oh, they've never yeah. gone 0-7. So here's my cash or trash. The Marlins turn it around. They can get back, and like in June, July, they're going to be back in that third place in the NL East. They're going to turn around and they're going to make a wild card spot. Cash or trash? I think it's cash. Because here's the thing. The Marlins has shifted their problems this year than what they were facing a couple years ago. They can score the runs. I mean, we have Jazz Chisholm out here hitting grand slams. Mm. We have burger bombs left and right. Right. But that bullpen has got to support what the starting pitchers are doing. And until Miami gets that bullpen figured out, um, it's going to be a dark season, but if they do, like you said, Steven, we could see him make another wild card. There's Trash. a lot of questions in that rotation because Sixto Sanchez has been kind of floating around in the Trash. bullpen. I thought he was going to be a part of the starting rotation, and I asked Jackson Schrader. Schrader was like, I thought he was going to be a part of the starting rotation too. Shout so out obviously there's still questions. Trash. Of r- surrounding this uh, rotation for the Miami well, So Miles. Hold on. you saying trash? Trash. I'm saying cash. The if they fix the bullpen. No, the if they fix the bullpen. The reason why I'm saying is trash. The reason why the Marlins made the playoffs last year when Sandy Alcantara was on the mound. Yes. Well, Sandy Alcantara. But Sandy Alcantara had a horrible year. I was about to say. I was about and to well, say. Well, they're still waiting on Braxton Garrett to yeah. come off the IL and, too. Uh, Very true. The Marlins also, their best player last year besides, um, yeah, their best player last year was Jorge Soler. He's not on the team anymore. Okay, he's gone. But the, bat, the, the, the bats are still producing right now. That's not the issue. You're I'm pointing gonna, out something that's not Luis the issue. And Luis Arias isn't at the same that's level. That's the problem. Luis Arias has had a very slow start to the year as well. Not batting high 300s and 400s like he was at the start yeah. of last season. You know it's bad when the Oakland Athletics, who have more errors and runs this year, have a better record. All right, we'll go and take a quick song break, and when we come back, we have some more segments up for you.
Hey, what's going on, everybody? I just wanted to let you know that if you want to listen to music, that's going to be over on our radio station at wolfsportsnetwork.com. Uh, tune into the radio station if you want to hear some great music we're playing on right live right now. So go tune in. Wolfstock 2024 featuring your favorite artists, including Kamal Saucier, Caller, and Jay Pruitt. Also featuring performances by Dark Souls Thug, Lumina, and XO. Wolfstock 2024, Thursday, April 4th from 6 to 9 p.m. in the Campus Center Ballroom. Brought to you by Dine West, Housing and Residence Life, Studio for Center Involvement and Inclusion, America Pie Pizzeria, Illuminate Productions, and Osier Apparel. With the first pick in the 2023 NBA Draft, the San Antonio Spurs select... This is the lottery. All right, welcome back. We are now on the lottery segment. And to start off, we have Christian joining us. Christian, good what you got back. for the lottery? It is good to be back. Oh, man. Oh, crap. There's so much. Okay. Um. <laughs> Who are you high no, on, No, Jackson, man? you go first. Who are you high on? Ja oh, Jackson, okay, Jackson, you go first. You you go first. There's a lot. You got There's it. so much. I've been you got through it, so Steven. much. Oh, who am I low on right now? i tell you who or I'm low high. on. Listen, I, I wanted to start off because, listen, we're playing our fantasy baseball league right now. I don't want to, like, like there's a whole bunch of things. We drafted yeah. our players. We have our teams. Um, there's this guy right now in the, in Houston that is not doing his job when it Who's comes that? to being a power hitter. Jordan Alvarez. I'm going to need you to get <laughs> uh -oh. it together, my hey, guy. Make sure no to check runs. out our real You played six games. Network. It is time Instagram. to, like, listen. I, I know sometimes people start off slow, and I think he's going to get it together by May, June. He's going to have that 40-plus homer right. season. But also at the same time, I ain't seeing it right now. Against he the Yankees, right he dropped now. nothing. He, hey. was, he, he, he had no hits. Or he had like one hit in the in a four-game series. I was watching a lot of that Yankees-Nashville series, and even the two games against the Blue Jays, they kind of look like a dumpster fire right now. Like I don't know what's going on in Houston. Like, was d losing Dusty Baker really that much of a hit? Uh, I, don't know, apparently. I, I don't know what's going on because it's like Jose Altuve is doing his job. Bregman's right. gotten some offensive power here and there. Kyle Tucker's Jordan's doing, doing nothing. He's doing absolutely nothing. And, I, and maybe it's just because I'm cursed. Maybe it's because <laughs> I drafted him on my team. Hey. But right now, that's who I'm low on. But here's the thing. I'm low on him now. Th this is just me, my personal preferences. Jordan's going to turn it around. Two weeks down the road, that perspective could completely change. I want to talk about a guy I am high on. Who's so, that, a couple weeks ago, we had a twin picks where we were talking about our favorites for AL and NL MVP. Mr. Andrew Jefferson chose Fernando Tatis Jr. Mr. Chase Jefferson chose Juan Soto. There was a guy we did not mention. Mr. Mookie Betts, hitting 500 for an average, five homers, 11 RBIs, and one stolen base this season so far. Mookie Betts has been looking like the star, like forget Shohei Otani, been looking like the star for the uh, Los Angeles Dodgers and has really proven that he's a top, well, I know it's only one week into the season, 
But he's proven that he's a top NL candidate. Call me back in June, brother. <laughs> Call, me <laughs> back. About Acuna? Call me back in June. I'm, I'm listen, that's what I'm saying. So let me see if those stats hit, hit up in June. J- well, move right now, Mookie and Fred Tatis are hitting on all cylinders. It. You know, Steven, you say this all the time. The first couple months in baseball. Don't where, matter. It don't matter. Don't it's, matter. It's in the summer. It's later in September. Ask the 29 August Nationals. Ask the 2019 yeah, exactly. Nationals, Look at the Atlanta Braves. The 2021 Atlanta, 2021 Atlanta Braves. Atlanta Braves did not click until September. Exactly. We are three games under 500 at All-Star break. Wow. Okay, someone I'm high on, and actually this is going a little bit, a little bit back, just a little bit. But he's still playing out of his mind because we haven't touched on it a lot. I'm high on Kyrie Irving right now. Ooh. I just want to say I don't know if you guys watched it. I watched it live. That game-winning shot that he hit. Oh, I saw it live on oh. Jokic. I watched it live. <laughs> Switching hands, fading away, just throwing the ball up, just a sky hook over a seven footer to win the game. He's been playing out of his mind. And, you know, honestly, from him leaving and, you know, being a journeyman and going all around, he's had some success, but he needs another ring. That's just my personal well, opinion. We, I remember when he first joined the Mavericks and his first, that actually the rest of the season with his time on the Mavericks, everybody was questioning how well can Kyrie and Luka pair. But this season they completely yeah. flipped that perspective, and we are seeing they are actually a fantastic duo. They are. I honestly still don't like their chemistry. If I was the coach, I would make Kyrie the quote-unquote star player. I know it's crazy to say, but I would have Kyrie running the ball up because he's a better facilitator and he can score from anywhere on the court. And I would have Luka being Luka, but I would have him catching and shooting, get receiving passes from Kyrie, and then going to work as an extension of Kyrie's game. Because, I mean, who's going to stop Kyrie? But when you have Luka bringing the ball down and then you have Luka to Kyrie, then there's a whole obstacle right there because Luka, he's slow. I mean, you know, he's shown. <laughs> He's not he's not the quickest player, but he doesn't need to be. So Do you agree that that was the greatest left handed buzzer beater of all time? Oh, for sure. That it was disgusting. For I, sure. I could not believe it when I saw it live. Unless someone's just chucked up a left hand full court shot. Like if Steven Adams is left handed <laughs> and he threw that full court shot, something like that. Maybe that would Jay be Jay Crowder. Oh, hey. Lord. So, well, I'm actually going to shift it back to baseball, and I'm actually glad you kind of brought in fancy a little bit because yesterday I picked up somebody on fancy that I've been keeping my eye on, and his name is Jackson. Not Volts, not Schrader, Jackson Merrill. Churio, the ri- rookie right fielder really for the Milwaukee like Brewers. So I when he like made him. the opening day roster, everybody was keeping his eye on him. And what has he done in 20 at bats? 350 average. He hit his first home run today. Four RBIs, one stolen base, and a 931 OPS. So I picked him up, and I didn't start him today because I was like, I want to see a little more from him, see what he does. He had, I think, a double and a home run today. So I'm officially stating that tomorrow I'm taking Jazz out of my starter lineup. And I'm putting Cheerio in because he's just killing it in his first five games of baseball. Like, as a Cardinals fan, I'm not a really big fan of the Brewers, but I am a big fan of Jackson Chorio. He came in as the top uh, number one international prospect, and the fact that he's not much older than me, he's like, he turned 20 like a month ago. Yeah. Wow. He turned 20 a month ago, and now he's in the starting lineup for the Milwaukee Brewers. So, so, as of right now, I know we're only a week into the season, but who's this one team that, as like, as besides the, the like your favorite team, like right. the Braves, you can't say the Braves, you can't say the Cardinals, um... Wh- who's a team that you're kind of scared of right now that's, like, looking like they can be that team Honestly, that can charge to the World Series? I am going to say the Milwaukee Brewers. I, I, I was, you know, I, the Reese Hoskins moves they made in the offseason was mm. actually really smart. He's and on I, his villain arc, dude. He is. After, <laughs> after those first two games in New York, he became the ultimate villain, and he has taken that role, and he is running with it. And it, this addition for the Milwaukee Brewers have been fantastic. Their pitching's looking good. Contreras is off to a good start. We see Jackson Churio, the young side of the Milwaukee Brewers, really taking a step up. So I... I, I do actually see the Brewers maybe sneaking into the wild card this year, but it's not more so what they're doing now. It's what they're building for the future. And Christian Yelich, he's showing signs already of, of that past MVP of season. Like 2019. Exactly. Yeah. So, honestly, I'm going to say the Milwaukee Brewers. I have a team I'm really high on, and they missed the playoffs, like, surprisingly last year. The, the New York Yankees. No, the New York Yankees. Yeah, New of course. New no, York, I, I agree with that. Yeah, actually. the Yankees are five and one in the fact that they're. I know, as we said, it's only a week into baseball, hey. but Juan Soto has been looking amazing. Anthony Volpe has been looking amazing, and they're doing all this without the top pitcher in the MLB, in my opinion, Garrett Cole. And with Aaron Judge doing practically nothing. Yeah, Aaron Judge is not doing anything. John Carlos not exactly you know firing on all cylinders. Yeah. But guess who is firing on all cylinders? Juan Soto. Yeah. Juan Soto's at, like Volpe. he he is starting off that week of being like, okay, you're, you're on your AL MVP run right now. 
And if he carries that momentum throughout the entire year, there's no chance that anybody in the American League is going to um, get to that point and get MVP. Even Oswaldo Cabrera is batting at 375 right now. And, hey, by the way, who was my, who was my MVP pick? Juan Soto. Thank you the, very much. He's been doing great. But also, I will give – Tatis has been doing great too. He has. Tatis he really has been. been. He has. He's well. killing it. Okay. One person I have been low on, shout out Steven, was Joe Musgrove. Joe Musgrove mm. went out there and just – Fall, fell apart, man. It's Mine fine. Is not bro. It's fine. It's one outing. Steven, yeah, I know. Listen, he, Max Freed lasted minus, one inning in his wait, first wait, outing. It's, it's, it's and, a week. He was hyping Steven him up. Lambert to lose to me. No, no, no. He, no, 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 Joe no, no, Musgrove did. Yeah, that's, he's got Joe oh, Musgrove. Joe but it was because of me that drafted him. He was hyping him up. But I will just say, even though he averages minus four points, today he is... He's played out of his mind. He's got yeah. 14 points already in fantasy. So he's looking great. It's so. like I said, I mean, sometimes, listen, man, fantasy is just one of those things to where you just draft you people never, based off no. of past success. Right. And then sometimes they don't hit. Nick Castellanos ain't doing nothing for me right now. Well, so. if you want to look at, at past success, look at Aaron Bummer. He had no past success. Why did the Braves pick him up? And what the heck is he doing his first two Well, listen, I would not be as mad about the Aaron Bummer thing if we didn't trade five players for the guy. Exactly. It was five and, players for just for him. And, and uh, and uh, it's just one of those things to where he, he it's one outing. Let's see what happens throughout the season. I don't base anybody's success, a team's success. Because, listen, if if the season ended right now, the Pittsburgh Pirates are the best team in baseball. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> like, that's that's just kind of where we're at right now. Shout out to Brady that. Wilby Ray. Uh-oh. That's just kind of where we're at right, right now when it comes to, like, you know, like the, the first week, you can't really tell like what pitches are going to be doing, what hitters are going to be doing. I always say, you don't know a team and what they're going to be success-wise of like getting it clo- longer into the playoffs until we get into like August, September. Because right. we all saw what happened with the Braves. They were hot in June, best team in baseball, but then as soon as September got going, the bats got cold, and then we lost to the Phillies in the first round. Baseball's a streaky game. It's about who's hot and who's cold. That is true. And also not playing in like 30-degree weather. Shout out to the Chicago White Sox and <laughs> the Atlanta Braves. All right, now let's hop into some game of the week. Alvarez, it's a high drive center field. Beer leans back. This game is turned upside down. It's time for the game of the week. Final four. Ooh, dun, the women's dun, and dun. the men's. We are officially in final four season. Now, is anyone going to talk about the Iowa and uh, UConn game by chance? I got a hot take, and I'm going to say it both. You know what? Just I'm going to throw it out there because if it comes true, it's not a hot take, but it is. I'm going to say that UConn sweeps both men's and women's and wins both championships. Ooh. How about that? I'll just throw that out there. I'm I am a- Team Iowa, and guys, I, I got to admit, it's a little hot in here. Y'all mind Uh-oh. if I take my jersey off? I don't know. It's oh, just, this, is, this might take a while. I'm just, <laughs> he's, 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 he's got a lot of layers on. I have a question. Is, is it hot in here? Or is it Caitlin Clark? It's what? Caitlin Clark season, baby. Do, see that you. delivery was awful. No, but, I, I liked it. We, we I, 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 I like it, it too. But sun, sun stinks in here, too. I think. What? Who, who's That's that? good. Angel <laughs> Reese. <Ryan. laughs> Get out there, Angel <laughs> Reese. Like we said in the introduction, this is no longer your sport, Angel. Wait, was Angel Reese? Yeah, she's this not is even in the, w- the year of Caitlin Stein. Clark. She Basically dropped 41 a. on yeah. LSU's head, and now they are facing UConn. And with, they are the hot. You know, baseball is a streaky sport, and so is basketball. Iowa is the hottest team in this tournament, and nobody's being them. Not even UConn. I would I would make a prediction, but I've been wrong about everything when it comes to college basketball. <laughs> I have to, I Here's that. my Even thing. Like um, right team. now, it's South Carolina looks like a team that nobody yeah. can beat. South Carolina it just looks Brink, like an incredible bro. team. I don't think anybody can beat them. She Even Caitlin Clark. Can. Even Caitlin Clark. I think. Listen, if Caitlin Clark gets past UConn, I think South Carolina is going to go into that national championship and they're going to handle business. Honestly, South Carolina shouldn't be undefeated. They are very beatable. They've had a lot of close calls, and they should have lost to Tennessee in the SEC yeah. second round. A wide left, wide open you're up by two and you leave their best year to wide open for a buzzer beater yeah I, that's just I, I tend to Iowa is only doing. favored by two and a half in that game so it's going to be a close Honestly, one in UConn I'm UCon. surprised they are favored I'm not going to lie as hot as Iowa as Iowa is you look at this UConn story and what's going on over there and as hot as they're playing I'm actually shocked that Iowa is favored but um all right, let's move on over. Like, dude, what about the men's? men's. Dude, the actually, men's final four. UConn, UConn, I can actually UConn, talk about the UConn. men's. Go Andrew, UConn. how's your how's your North Carolina? Buddy? There's no way North Carolina. There's no way Andrew should have won that twin picks last week. Oh no, and see, I'm gonna prove it right here. UConn and Alabama, they play in the final four. Who does UConn have, Andrew? I want you to look at me. Tristan Newton. 
Donovan, Donovan Klingon, who has been killing it on the boards. Cam Spencer, who has been everywhere on the defensive side. This is the most complete team in the tournament, which is RJ why... Davis who? Which is why Armando Beka, who? Which is why Harrison I said Ingram, they are going back to back. Now you look at the Alabama side. Who do they have? Mark Sears, who's averaging 21 points a game. Australia. They have Grant Nielsen, Nick Pringle, who has been a massive defensive presence. But what is it going to come down to? It's going to be a dogfight. But ultimately, I think UConn is too good for even yep. Alabama to beat. Their yep. great pace and complete roster are going to find a way to slow down the red hot Mark Sears. And on the offensive side, they're going to it up from three, and they're going to find a way to score inside around Pringle, who yeah, I'm not going to lie. He's, and they've been there, though. UConn's been there, and they know that. They have. They Alabama, this, this is the first time Alabama has ever been the Final Four. Yeah, UConn, UConn has been here multiple year, times. And now yeah. they want to revenge. They want to bring it home this yeah. year. No, UConn won last year. So if That's they true. win again, they should, they it'll be the first be back time to going back. back to back since UConn Florida. is a more complete team than North they Carolina. They are the most complete team. They're the most complete team in the tournament, and I feel uh, clearly North Carolina couldn't get the job done. UConn will get the job done. Hey, they but will. on the other side of that men's bracket, you got red hot NC State, who's made a Cinderella appearance. No. Andrew Andrew Cole 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 burns. has made a Cinderella run like the no other. The man burns. But is it Edie's time to get to the championship and win his ring? No. What do y'all think? No. No. Yeah, no, I don't no. think. No. Listen. North Carolina State's story has actually, uh, like, it's been really cool to watch. I mean, I always, you always love those Cinderella stories. Right. Um, but the Cinderella's about to get uh, knocked off of her uh, uh, pumpkin. Purdue. But they're playing it's Purdue, like, who in recent years. Yeah, it's going to be a bippity bippity boop bye bye It's surprising that Purdue's in the Final Four based on their choke artist That's what I think the Final the Two is going to be. Listen, again, I don't – college basketball, I have just been off on it. Like, literally, yeah. the Sweet 16 has just completely – Knocked me out of like the like yeah. my knowledge Whoa. when it comes to college basketball and these teams' success. So like what I lo- look at it right now, the two best teams in the tournament uh, have been Purdue and yeah. UConn. Yeah. And looking at the final two teams, it's going to be oh. and Purdue. I was and, gonna say because I was watching this Purdue and Tennessee team. I'm saying if Tennessee had a bigger guy, like a like a bigger guy to guard, seven foot four, seven foot three, Zach Eady, Tennessee would have won. Well, Tennessee was a more complete team did. than Purdue, but they did. <laughs> I mean, but they did. NC State got they had DJ Burns, the Kool Aid Man. So imagine DJ Burns going. Up against I mean, I'm gonna Zach be honest. Eady. Either way, I think if UConn wins this next game, they win it all. That, well, that's it. Yeah. I mean, what scares me the, the most is Zach Eady as a senior, 300 pounds. He's seven foot four, scoring 25 points a game, but he's also He's, he's a good shooter, too, a he good is. mid-range shooter, and he's 50% from three. He but is. that is a scary man to go up against. And DJ Davis, I don't care how big he is, he's going to have Burns. a— DJ Burns. DJ Burns, I'm sorry. He's not big RJ Davis. Big Burns. DJ Bur- this is DJ Burns' time now. Big but boy Burns. I will say, I do think NC State is capable of being Purdue if B-B-B. they can find a way to stop Zach Eady, which as of right now kind of seems impossible. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. It, it's probably going to be Purdue versus UConn. I still have UConn because UConn was my original pick, but uh, it's anything can happen in March Madness. Any yeah. given Sunday. But also <laughs> because just um, I'm, I'm a Braves fan, and I, like we only got about two minutes left in this segment. All right. Braves home opener. Woo! It's happening hey. on Friday. Spencer yeah. Strider is going to be on the mound. I can't um, wait. I'm who, gonna be, who are we facing the again? The Diamondbacks. Diamond. Oh God. I'm gonna be there. Oh, in per- God. <laughs> hey, <laughs> that's gonna be a close one. I'm gonna be there in person, going with the Catfish Cowboy. Now we went to go see the dime, the Braves play Diamondbacks last year, and that's what we lost 15 to 11. So it was a very high out- offensive scoring. Last time I saw the Diamondbacks in person was stride on the mound. Hopefully we can it can be a little more defensive. But man, these Diamondbacks look incredible. I mean, the Diamondbacks offense is just incredible. Corbin Carroll's obviously amazing. Luis Lordy Scurriel Jr. Um, what they have against the Rockies was it a fourteen run inning in it's, the third? It's it, that's what they can do, and also Christian Walker is just that. Oh, gosh. It's it's like I said, up and Burrell down that Jr. lineup, well, Arizona to has a, a top class. five lineup. Stalling in my opinion, Christian Walker just just everyone. Everyone. I need Christian Walker to have a master class because I have him in fantasy. Yeah. I mean, everybody talks about how complete the Braves roster are, but if you look at the Diamondbacks, up and down the oh, whole they nine, got it too. they've honestly got they've got completeness too. And they also added Jordan Montgomery. The they rotation's did. looking good. I mean, look like, like I said, Diamondbacks are a team to watch out Jack for, but uh, the Braves are going to handle business Ooh. when it comes to Uh-oh. this uh, uh, home series this weekend. I sure hope so because I do not want to witness a loss in person. 
person. All right, we're gonna go to another song break. But before we do, have y'all not heard? Do y'all not, not know? Heard what? Woolstock oh. 2024 oh. is oh my tomorrow. Goodness. tomorrow. Really? Tell me about it. Listen, I I, I told y'all once. I'm gonna tell y'all again. Six to nine yep. in the camp or in the uh, campus center ballroom. Yes, you've got is. live music. I do. Really? You've got food. I do. Really? You've what got else? games. I have. I heard that Mr. John Halley is gonna be hosting one of the games. Wow. Who doesn't want to go play with John? I uh, I would love to play with Mr. Howley. <laughs> <laughs> Don't miss out Shout on out UWG's own finest performers. You can listen to Dark Soul Thugs, Love Jay em. Pruitt, yes. Come on, Sauce, yeah. Oh, That's my goodness. Player. Blooming it. Look. Pumina, I'm sorry, and XO, but I said it again. You get to play with John Howley. <laughs> get to play those games. Cornhole's gonna be there, ladies and gentlemen. Come Remember, on. guys, he is six foot four, tall, white guy. You'll it is see also going to be cold. It's a bundle up. It's gonna be freezing. All right, guys, we'll head to song break. Poor John. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Making sure that you tune in over to wolfsportsnetwork.com if you're wanting to listen to some great music. And um, if not, stay tuned into the YouTube live stream. We thank everybody for listening, and uh, we'll be right back.
It's one of the worst days that I've had in a long time. Fire me up. All right, guys. Steven, in the last segment, he or excuse me, in the catcher trash segment, he already kind of previewed his frustration with Jordan Alvarez. But there are more baseball players out there that are just are off to a horrific start this MLB season. And the guy I want to highlight, we talked about how good those New York Yankees have been. And um, I know y'all don't really know about it, but we're doing a little fantasy league with the station or whatever. He's also on my fantasy team, so that just makes me even more fired up. And that is the supposedly great... Aaron Judge. Now, he's just not off to a horrible start. He is off to a horrific start. Batting a 125, only three hits. He finally got his first home run of the season just a couple hours ago. But he has a whopping seven strikeouts. And you compare that to the rest of the team. You got Juan Soto, who's averaging a 417 with four RBIs. And then you got Oswaldo Cabrera, who has a 375 average. And Anthony Volpe, who has a 474. So his team is killing it. What is Aaron Judge doing? And you can say the same about Stanton, too. But, I mean, the Aaron Judge, before Juan Soto came to town, he was the face of the New York Yankees. Juan Soto gets here. He's doing Juan his Soto. job. But what is Aaron Judge doing? Especially on my fantasy team. I'm actually about to bench him. I said in the group chat today hey. that I'm actually thinking about benching hold Aaron now, Judge. Hold on and now. That's hold crazy on to now. Say. Hold on now. Calm, calm down there, little skipper. I'm all, breathing. Listen, I'm breathing. I'm breathing. Every, we got to see the all-rise Aaron Judge. His first exactly. dinger, actually, a couple minutes before Sports Out of Pocket went on air. So, ju- just like Austin Riley. Austin Riley just needed that first home run out of the way before he could start producing hits at the plate. Yeah, now, he produced last night, all right. The, okay. Bases w- w- loaded. Take the out, element. Take the, play on your birthday. Give us a nice, right. warm, crisp summer afternoon in Chicago, and I guarantee you we smoke them with yeah, a right. Beautiful right. performance from uh, Renato Lopez, by the way. Shout out to him. But listen, oh, incredible. Aaron Judge, listen, that New York Yankees team, they're streaking right now. Even when mm-hmm. Aaron Judge is on his cold spell, Juan Soda has picked up the bat, and he's playing like a you know an early MVP, MVP candidate, like you said. And just by the way, Fernando Tatis Jr., a couple hits, you know, batting a 323 average right now with three home runs. He's playing like an early MVP candidate. But Aaron Judge, he's going to get there, okay? He just needs that first home run out of the way to get that energy flowing in him again, you know, he's riding the Yankees high right now, but once he starts producing, along with Juan Soto's hot bat, that New York Yankees team, as I hate to admit it, because I cannot stand them Yanks, they're going to be a dangerous team in the American League this year, might actually make Bro, a threatening postseason dude, run this year, dude. since they have proven that they can dominate the athletics, I'm uh, sorry, the Astros, not only at not home, but well, in remember Houston. Remember the Astros are without, du- honestly, the Dusty Baker thing, it was like, uh, come on now, though. It's sweeping the Astros Astros in a four, yeah, speaking the, that sweeping, is a fantastic roster. Sweeping the Astros but, in a four-game series but in Houston bringing is it, ridiculous. Bringing it back to Aaron Judge, Aaron Judge did start off slow last season, too. He was on track to hit, like, 50 homers last season, then boom, injury. The so whole Yankees hopefully he doesn't, roster. Hopefully, hey. hopefully he doesn't get injured like I, this season. I, just I, want actually, not. I actually like Aaron Judge, um, even though, like, the Yankees is very comparable to, like, the Dallas Cowboys or whatever. I they, love they're Aaron America's Judge. least favorite team. But least favorite team. Unless you're from that area. not producing. I drafted this guy in my, in the third round of our draft. Julio Rodriguez. A 217 mm. batting average, zero homers, zero runs, one RBI, two stolen bases, a total of four points throughout this entire season. And you know who's going off? A man you made fun of me for drafting, J.P. Crawford. He's going I didn't out make th- fun of you for yeah, drafting. Yeah, you said he was old. You said he was old he and that old. he was a horrible shortstop pick. He was and he's old. going out there with the little cane to trade and he's Carlos hitting Correa. base it after base it. He is the modern day Nate Marcakis. How is Jackson going to call him old Did when he. Did you just say J.P. Crawford is the modern day? Nick in Marquez. terms of hating, hold on, he, hold on. he is one of the most consistent haters in the MLB. How is Jackson going to have the of, How is Jackson going to have the nerve to call someone old when he literally supports the MLB retirement home? <laughs> <laughs> it's not adding up. Hey, I will say, though, shout out to Wilson Contreras, though, because he has been killing it in this series against nope. the Padres, which thankfully is the main reason why I'm up by all over right, 50 all points. Right. All right, I haven't Steven been able to talk Lambert against this yet, and Jackson, you hush. All right, it is my turn, all right? Because, listen, not only is Jordan not producing, Ooh. listen, my entire outfield isn't producing right now. Okay, you know what? I'm going to give Santander a pass. He started off hot. He's, he's starting a, to cool down a little bit. He's done great. Though, so I'm going to need... A disaster to happen. No. I'm gonna need a war to go on. I'm gonna need something, something, just a disaster because Question. I need Nick Castellanos Steven. to go off. When you have one point, on. one, listen, one point in 
What are we? Six games? Are we kidding? Hey, are we serious? I got right a tra- now? I got a tra- tragedy that just occurred. AMC Skills will not be at Wolfstock tomorrow. There's your home Why? run. There's your home run. <laughs> I don't know. It's just not performing. So there you go, man. Nick- I need, listen, I need that to happen because, listen, Nick Castellanos, no home runs, only two RBIs, one point Whoa. the entire season. It, 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 listen, he's about, to, he's about to kick in, and I'm about to bring in my other outfielder, oh. which who do I have on my bench right now? I, of course, I of course, of trade. course, my, my, my phone does this. I will say though, I did have a little oh, Trent Ross Green. Seven new baseball Green. team. Why not? Get him in there. He's hey. got more points. Got four three more points than what Nick Oscar. Hey, Let's guys, talk about Wander Trent Ross's horrible. seven new baseball team. Let's talk about Wander Franco's fourteen <laughs> new baseball team over here, guys. I had a I had a come to Christ moment after the draft because you need I another one. Because I did something that is unlike me as a diehard Bryce fan. You I had the, I had the audacity to take Bryce Harper off the draft board. And awesome. right before the MLB opening day occurred, I traded him to Jason Barker of Triple Threat for the greatest first baseman in the MLB, Fredward Freeman. Freddie, Frederick, Frederick. Freddie Binston, whatever you want to call him. He is now part of my team, my star-studded team, who I have the second best outfield next to Brandon Willoughby Ray's team. I have Mike Trout, who's been on an absolute MVP tear lately. Three home runs, six games in the season. I've got Aaron Judge, who's going to have a turnaround moment. Adonis Garcia is right there, who was in the MVP talks last season. Now listen, Bryce Harper, I do have to shout him out, though, because he's been, he was ice cold. He went hitless in the first four games of the season. Season, but yesterday managed to have a three home run seven RBI game. Now, of course, if you've been listening to Sports Out of Pocket for a while, you know my inner hatred towards Bryce Harper. But I gotta give props for props on dude. He's not on my team anymore. I much, much rather have Freddie Free. It makes me feel better as a person to hey. have Bryce Harper off my team. But hey, shout out to Harper. I, man. I actually want to apologize. You know, JP Crawford had a fantastic series against the Red Sox. I just looked at his stats in this Cleveland series, and he's actually 0 for 8. So he hasn't done anything in this Cleveland wah, series. Wah. Hey, but he had a Retirement fantastic home. series against the Red Sox. He'll pick it up. I'm not worried about J.P. Crawford. I'm, 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 all my focus is on hey. Aaron Judge. And, you know, Jazz Chisholm, besides his grand slam, he's still batting under 200. Hey, listen, I know, I know these guys I'm about to name are big fans of the show. Um, Blake Snell and Jordan Montgomery. I know you oh, guys are listening. Tuning in. Yeah, I knew you. I know you guys are listening right now. Right now. When they're are you guys going to get on the mound for your boy? I need my pitchers to step up in a big way because that's the reason I lost to Jackson Schrader in week one, man. When are my star-studded rotation going to actually start throwing hey, the baseballs? Brother, 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 brother. Who no, do you think my you pitcher, are? No. My pitcher did step up. Mr. Logan Webb of the San Francisco Giants. Congratulations, and that is man. why... I, oh, also Shane Bieber, who's a, playing like a top Shane five Shane Bieber's going man. crazy. He had a yeah, Shane Bieber start. as well. I drafted him. He was like my fourth pitcher off the board over Justin Steele. But, um, and he got so, injured. Justin Steele, man. Oh, I wish I Jackson, I'd like to remind and, you, you are currently losing to Willoughby right, right now, so go ahead and try that. I, <laughs> be, and I did hey, beat Mr. Stepdaddy Stephen Thomas Oh, no! Lambert. The first game of the season? Oh, no! Oh, I'm going to And I did beat Mr. Stephen Matthew Lambert. My dog. There's 52 more weeks of this. Like I'm not, I'm not sweating. I'm not crying. I'm not gonna sit here and, bo- and, and get into a ball here. One week, one week. Who lost last season, big dog? Who had, the the who had to eat the hot wings? Who had to eat the hot wings? Who was on top? Who was on top? You're looking at him. Me who over was here. on top? Oh, you, you. Yeah. Oh, Jackson Island. Jackson, your haircut looks like crap. Jackson <laughs> back. Jackson Island, you know how bad. <laughs> Everybody's been back. wondering why Jackson Volz has gotten cuter this week. I mean, hey, you know. Hey, the board up's that, looking man. a little better, you know, over spring break, you know, something, yeah, some good things some happen. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. All no, right, no. but genuinely, I, I think – uh, it's like this here. Fantasy, I look at fantasy the same way that I look at the Major League yes. Baseball season. Um, you have to at least be 500 by the time you get into like June, July. Yeah. Um, so I'm hoping that my team's going to be able to pick it up because starting off 0-2 yeah. no, is not week. exactly the hey, same situation here. I'm glad you already you know, admitted um, that you're going to be off to an 0-2 d- start. Dude, there's, I, I mean, unless it. my pitchers go absolutely ape, there's no <laughs> way I'm going to be able to... You got Strider on the mount uh, Friday night, though. You know, wonders like, can happen. Absolutely crazy. Like no, my, uh, my, my pitchers are not going to be able to do... Like I'm, I'm not going to be able to catch up to you, so that's fine. But, like, dealing with that, dealing with 0-2, my, my team's got to pick it up, man. It, they just have to. You know, who's actually been, you know what's actually been kind of killing me early in this fancy season? What's that, man? It's, what, it's uh, games Tell getting me. postponed. I, oh, know. yeah. I have, like, three games in delayed right now, uh, so none of my players are playing. Austin Ryan's not playing for you today. Uh, don't you have Ozzy Albies as well? I do not. 
Okay. I have a Cattell Marte who was going off. Corbin and he got Burns. Seven points, so. Corbin Burns and uh, Grayson Rodriguez were supposed. Corbin or, Burns, sorry, Corbin went Burns today. Off in his debut he did, and he was supposed Royals. to pitch again today. But guess what? Well, it, it's in like a three-hour rain delay right now, and they're starting to talk about just postponing it, which is points. That's like twenty-five points. I'm not getting today. Luckily, I'm still beating Jason. Shout out to Jason Barker. They 13, will pitch later in the week, so I'm not worried about it. Like they, Zach Wheeler's it, supposed to be pitching today, but if he hey, pitches tomorrow, it's fine. Yeah. It's just this April April weather, man. It's just it's, it's, it's getting to me. It got you the brace, too. It's getting to me, Jackson, man. I could bet my entire wallet you're not winning this league. I, can, I could literally bet, like, my entire bank account. The Shout out, out to Cactus Cowboy. Who does he Cowboy. think he is? Angel Reese over here? My dog. No. You cannot say that after you lost the league last I, time. I was dog. fixing to say, Angel Reese has a ring to fly. You know, you Remember got nothing to show for it. Remember happened the last time someone did that? Where is she? Where is she now? Where is Angel Reese? Not here. Not here. Hey, I don't watch LSU for Angel Reese. Hey. This is so off topic, but I, I, no, I'm not going to bring it up. It's way too off topic. Actually, no, it's Fire Me Up segment. I can't talk about it. Anyways, <laughs> all right, guys. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Be sure to check out uh, Sports Pack tomorrow from 6 to 7 p.m. No, 5 to 6 because oh, of the oh, great right. Wolf Stock. So they will be on air from 5 to 6 p.m. tomorrow. Be sure to check them out. Thank you so f- so much for watching me host my first ever show. Also, make sure you're all tuning into Triple Threat and also Tea Time. Absolutely. Hey, don't, don't Wolf for- Sports Network, we're, we're putting out the content. Baby. Don't forget <laughs> that tomorrow's episode of Sports Pack is going to feature an exclusive interview from Cole Fisher. And Chase and I had the privilege to take we part did. in that we interview. Did. So we hey. might be airing a little bit of that interview in our next week's show. So well. keep, keep an eye out for that. But again, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to tune in. And I hope you all have a beautiful for Western Week, and also, I better see every single one of y'all week. at Wolfstock 2024. For Andrew to host. I'm going to be oh, in the yeah. hosting Andrew's chair next, next week. week. Can't wait for and it. And then oh, me God. for the season finale. Y'all don't got to tune in for that. If Wolfstock's not on your mind when you go to bed tonight, then something's wrong. All right. <laughs> y'all have a good night. Peace.